Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club show. We have some Model 3 information such as the body structure and the internal battery pack information. To be error wheels or not to be. Is the Model 3 a good investment for you? We'll talk about some Tesla supercharger growth. Some electric vehicle adoption news for you. Yeah, we'll see what the other guys in the auto industry are doing on the EV front too. And some more information and we answer your questions on Mailbag. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the show. It's been uh, a few weeks since we were at the handover event. My name is Kenneth Bacor. I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for uh, joining in again. Yeah, we had yeah. a little time for vacation. How about yourself? Yeah, I had some vacation as well. Got to have a breather after the the, the fun we had down in the San Francisco, San Jose area. You spent more time with your vacations. So yeah, we needed a lot it. of fun. <laughs> we all needed some time off. Absolutely. Well, we're back to the grind. So we have a lot more information. So we appreciate you all, all coming back. So uh, we're, let's just get, get right into it here. We got lots of information. So take it away, Ken. Yeah, well, we've covered a lot of material already, Trevor, from the um, handover event. So we won't go into a lot of detail on this show about it. Uh, we did a meetup last week here in the GTA area. We had probably around 60 people show up. Yeah, I want to thank everybody people. for coming out. That was a great time at the Electric Vehicle Discovery Center here in Toronto. And you videotaped uh, what we presented at the meetup. We you, you went into great detail on the user interface for the Model 3, mm-hmm. a lot of the functions and controls. And then we talked about the pricing and, and answered a bunch of questions. So... Uh, I think you've got that keyed up as a video that'll be released shortly. Yeah, it's ready to go. We're just waiting for the right time. So uh, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon down on the bottom so that you get instant notifications as soon as the video comes out. But watch for that. That'll be out here just in a few days. So that's going to answer a lot of questions that we keep getting emails and comments on Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from the handover event. Um, you know, we did a summary of that event, so we won't go into a lot of detail, but it was a, it was a great event. It was nice to actually spend some time in the Model 3 to physically touch it and see it and all that kind of stuff, even though it was short uh, driving experience that we had. Um, we know that Tesla is committed to getting cars out uh, to the masses as quickly as possible. You know, they're going to ramp up um, production to 5,000 a week by the end of the year. Uh, reservations are continuing to grow, so they're not having a problem there. Uh, but again, you know, there's a lot of information already that's been covered by ourselves and other YouTubers and other articles. So I would encourage you to go look at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to focus on some of the new stuff today. And one of the main things that just came out yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, is the the body alloy mix. Now, you've been talking a lot through the last year or so about your thoughts on what you what you expected the body to be made up of, uh, some lighter materials, things like that. Um, what do you think about that? Well, what we've got our hands on here is a PDF document from the uh, Tesla service. And uh, the reason some of this information is coming out, of course, is the uh, Tesla technicians are starting to get trained on the Model 3 as far as service and body repair. So this is a body repair document. And what it does is that it clearly shows that the uh, Model 3 is made of three different types of uh, high strength uh, steel and some aluminum. Now, I've been a proponent for a long time on this show and on my private videos. I always thought that the Model 3 was mostly uh, aluminum based on past experience. And Tesla's been pretty coy about the makeup of the Model 3. And it looks like, uh, well, I was wrong. (laughs) Uh, It looks like there's... Not entirely. Well, you know, there's some aluminum in the body, but not as much as I thought. Now, of course, Mm -hmm. uh, these pictures that we're going to put up behind us here don't really show the door panels and what they're made up of. When I was at the delivery event, I tested it with a magnet. And I couldn't detect anything as far as steel. It was mostly aluminum. So I'm going to assume that the door panels are still aluminum, but it definitely shows a lot more steel in the construction of this car compared to, say, a Model S or a Model X. Mm-hmm. So I was wrong, but it happens. At it the happens. end of the day, it doesn't okay. really matter. Actually, in some ways, it actually does matter because um, repair costs uh, should be a little bit lower on this car Yeah. Uh, for major accidents and stuff because steel is obviously is a known thing. It's a little easier to work on than aluminum and stuff. But... Uh, Anyways, it just goes to show that uh, Tesla is certainly working on uh, cost reduction. Uh, one little point I want to make here. Um, one of the shots, and I'll put it up behind us here. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, 
Tesla put a little flourish in there. I think there's some pride. Yeah. Uh, they managed to get the three bars out of the Tesla E and the early Model 3 symbols into the floor panel. Yeah. In, the, in the stamping of the metal, I thought, man, that's pretty clever. That's on purpose. That's you think that, it's on purpose? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, that's some. The pride. engineers are saying, let's. There's some pride. Let's in put there. something in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I exactly. thought that was a cute, uh, a, a cool little thing that they threw in there. So. So some nice graphics that you'll put up, and uh, they're going to also link to it. There's some articles uh, that have come out on that, but certainly, as you said, a mix of materials of both aluminum, uh, mainly on the outer skin, I guess, on the body mm -hmm. type makeup from an aluminum perspective, and then you've got your your uh, different steel. So you've got some mild steel on the outside structure and then you've got some high trank steel for the floor panels section some section joints mm -hmm. and the front areas in the in, in the front of the car and then your ultra high strength steel for the safety cage and the main structural and that was proven in the the video that Tesla showed at the the delivery launch uh, of uh, their side impact versus the Volvo S60 uh, quite clearly um, that they were able to take more of that energy absorb it and, and maintain the structure the integrity of the the cage yeah that video made a huge mm -hmm. huge impression at the delivery it did yeah, yeah it really hear shows people go wow yeah it was pretty <laughs> neat to see uh so it really just showed that tesla is really on board we're trying to get this to a five-star rating and i i don't really have yeah. any doubts um uh, you know they were each able to achieve it on the model s and the model x uh, i have no doubts that they will achieve this on the model 3 so good safe car if you're looking at the, the mid mid-range segment for this car it's going to be really nice and safe so glad to see that all right, so let's move on. What what else came out after the event was the Model 3 configurator. Now, we have talked about this on, on our last show as far as what options uh, you'll be able to choose for your Model 3. Uh, but what we thought we'd just highlight it again because we're still getting questions about the configurator and about what's going to be coming with what. But, I mean, the basic choices will be standard or long range, as they're calling it, battery sizes, uh, your exterior colors, your wheels, uh, the choice of either... Uh, getting advanced AP software now or later, and also buying into the future self-driving capability, which isn't there today, but you could pay for it and save some some premium money. Um, now, you can make those choices if you're one of the lucky few employees today or uh, some of the California residents that are going to start getting their cars in, in the next quarter. Uh, but initially, from what we've been told, all the all the the interiors, all the cars will be coming with longer range batteries and premium interiors for now. So from a pricing, you're kind of stuck with that. Yeah, for those of you who are looking at thing. getting a base car, because mm -hmm. of course the promise was always a thirty-five thousand car uh, dollar car, that will happen closer to the end of October, sometime in November. Uh, that's when they said that the uh, production will open up for those cars. So, like I said, uh, the configurator right now is open for employees and employees only at Tesla. Mm -hmm. uh, and once they open it up for the public, you'll have more choices, more abilities to configure, and you'll have access to uh, the, some of the cheaper options. So just a few more months, folks, so be a little more patient, and then you'll finally be able to uh, to start playing around with this. But, I mean, there's lots of pictures already leaked on the internet of this, and uh, I did a video a few months ago, I think right at the start of July, mm -hmm. where I uh, had a sneak peek at the, what the new configurator for the Model S was going to look like, and sure enough, that's exactly what we're seeing for the Model 3. So. Okay, and on that note, um, Evanex, our, our friends down there, came out with an article recently called Insider Gems. I encourage you to go to their site and have a read uh, where they've highlighted, again, some of the other features that have popped up or, or questions that people are asking about for the Model 3. Things like, does the charge port door open on its own and close on its own? Is it just a manual plastic thing or is it motorized? Well, thanks to Steve uh, Jerviston, who did the video because everybody was asking him, please do something, including yes. yourself, right? Yeah, no, he came through. He came yeah. through and did that nice video to see that it is fully and, you know, it'll, it'll open up with the push of the button and everything as it does today in the S and the X. Uh, but they also talk about, you know, uh, there's some other people that are thrown together all the color and wheel combo so you can view that, see what it looks like if you're still thinking about it. You've got lots of time to make up your mind. Sure. Um, they talk about the Motor Trend photo shoot, which is a great photo shoot afterwards. Uh, in fact, it was done that, uh, I think, the day of the launch. But, it was. But prior to the actual event, and yes. then they couldn't release it till after. Great high-res photos. All the different angles, the inside, outside, in daytime, all the stuff we've been asking about is there. So I encourage you to have a look at that um, and the front area. Uh, the button-free dash. I mean, you know, we talked about that before. It's only a hazard switch. Yeah. Right? There's above nothing overhead. else. Above overhead. Above overhead, right in the middle. <laughs> the touchscreen UI. And again, uh, we have we went through that at the meetup, and, and that video will be coming out shortly, where Trevor does a pretty in-depth review of the touchscreen UI. So I encourage you to look at that. Uh, and that unique HVAC system, which we talked about as well. 
which was pretty cool. Yeah. And you um, got a chance to actually experience it because you were sitting in the front. So. Yeah, it, it's pretty. I mean, there's lots of videos on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can check it out. When you see it in person, it'll make a pretty big impression. Yeah. Um, my personal opinion, they can't leave this in this car. It's got to go to the other cars eventually. I, I really hope so. It's it's pretty neat. So. And it's very easy to, to use. And it's very efficient by what uh, people are experiencing. Like, you know, they're feeling the air coming out you know, as exactly as, as they're, they're moving in, uh, within it, the UI. It, it worked very well. i you know, if any of you have any concerns, just wait till you actually experience it mm -hmm. in person. It works very well. It's, it's a very neat system that they've done. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about that battery pack, this new info that just came out. And, uh, Fred at electric broke this story we mm -hmm. have to give him full credit for that. Yeah. So what we finally got here is some, uh, diagrams on the battery pack and some internal architecture of, of the battery packs. And it's, uh, it's, it's somewhat the same as model S, but a lot of, um, functions are different. And I think, uh, overall the way my take from this battery pack information is that Tesla has really worked really hard on model three, uh, in packaging things a little more efficiently. So let's get into some of the details here. The first thing is that the base battery pack or the standard battery pack is just over 50 kilowatt hours. And it consists of uh, 2,976 of the 2170 battery cells. Mm -hmm. That's this little guy right here. So the bigger, more dense cells. Exactly. The older ones, yeah. Yeah, and they're arranged in 31 cells per brick. And there's 48 bricks in four modules. Now the, uh, the modules are laid out um, uh, horizontally. And it looks like there's firewalls between them. There's no mention, of course, on the cooling system. I'm going to assume it's the same kind of cooling system the they're doing on the S and the X, mm -hmm. you know, with the with the interwoven. I believe uh, it is the cooling mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. The 74 kilowatt hour battery pack is 4,416 2170 cells, and there's 46 cells per brick, and there's 48 bricks in four modules. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the 4416, which is something that uh, Ben at Teslanomics had leaked some time ago, right. was not a form factor. It's actually the cell count. So a small correction on his part, but mm -hmm. um, anyways, still some good information. Um, just a, just out of convenience, just so people know, the Model S, for example, has anywhere from 7400 to 8200 uh, battery cells. But that again, the battery cells are smaller. Right. And on the Model 3, they're slightly larger. It doesn't mean the battery cells are better. This is a cost reduction effort. So if you can increase the battery size a little bit bigger on the cell and get the cost down, well, you don't have to use as many. And of course, okay. you know, and, and get the same efficiencies out of those. Batteries exactly. As well, so which is what again, a lot of this do. stuff is not mm -hmm. about making the car perform better because we know the Model 3 doesn't perform any better than the Model S. It's about cost efficiencies. Some of the other information that's really quite interesting here is that unlike the Model S and the Model X, where they have separate chargers located underneath the seats, mm -hmm. They've actually built that stuff actually into the battery pack itself. And the battery pack is installed from the bottom. And the hump at the back of the battery pack, now on the Model S, of course, you got a hump in the front, but those are two um, uh, battery modules that are in there. Uh, most of the power electronics and everything are located at the, batter, the, ba uh, at the batter, back of the battery pack on the Model mm -hmm. 3. And it gets inserted through the body panel. There's a hole in the body panel. And I'll put the graphic up here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about where this hump comes through. Now, what does it mean? It just means that it's better packaged and mm -hmm. it's less cost because now you don't have all these extra little bits and stuff. Yep. And in some ways it makes it perhaps a little bit easier for the technicians to work on. However, the fact that the battery pack is installed this ways and where the connectors are, can, um, as well as some other information that Fred was able to get here, that the way that the battery pack is actually installed precludes battery pack swapping. So battery pack swapping right. on Model 3 is dead, dead, dead. It's not happening. There's a lot of rumors about... and some diagrams and patents that Tesla put through about, you know, potentially swapping technology. You drive up and they swap it the battery, but that's not going to be an easy task on the Model 3. It's not happening. Not so happening. even though they demonstrated that on mm -hmm. the Model S, it mm -hmm. never really went anywhere. They right. only built one station in Harris Ranch. It never mm -hmm. really that's went right. anywhere. So battery pack swapping is dead. It's all about supercharging. Tesla's putting all their eggs in the basket. It's you know, evidence, of course, mm -hmm. with the supercharger network expansion that's going on. The other tidbit about this uh, battery pack is the location of the connectors precludes any kind of uh, wireless charging. Um, right. So it's definitely supercharging on this battery pack. So right. anyways, yeah. go read the article. I'll put the link in the bottom of the uh, description. You go uh, read it for yourself. It's quite interesting, but it, it really shows that Tesla's thinking a little differently with the Model 3. Mm -hmm. um, one other, actually, one other tidbit I, I almost forgot, and this is probably the most important part. This new battery pack does away with a separate heater That's right. for the battery pack. What Tesla is doing is that they are using part of the motor 
mm -hmm. and With the, the power electronics mm -hmm. to modulate the bat, uh, the motor in such a way that they can actually generate heat through the motor without the motor actually moving. And they're using that heat recovery system to heat the battery pack. Again, I think mm -hmm. it's about two things, cost savings because you don't have that separate heating system and it's more efficient and cheaper to manufacture. So if this technology does make its way to the Model S or X is unknown at this point, maybe not because those are higher performance cars. Maybe mm -hmm. they actually still need to use the AC induction motor Makes sense. and mm -hmm. uh, the separate heating system mm -hmm. to maintain the battery pack. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see in time. Um, and they've got the real estate for it in, in the size yeah, of the Yeah, it's a bigger so. car and stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyways, very interesting information. I highly encourage yeah. you to read the article. All right, let's talk quickly about those Model 3 Aero wheels. There was a whole bunch of stuff on the internet about those wheels you, over You know the what they call it weeks. on our forum? What's that? The UWCs, the ugly wheel covers. Over ugly wheel covers. There you go. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I we've kind of guessed all along that there was something underneath those covers that was worth looking at. And there are a lot of pictures that have surfaced and videos now, so it's all out there, uh, that the standard wheel option is, in fact, a pretty decent wheel option on those 18-inch uh, wheels. Um, you take those caps off, those aero caps, and you've got a nice-looking alloy wheel underneath there. That's right. Um, and I think the general sense is if you don't want to go to the 19-inch wheels, and we've got something in our mailbag we'll talk about wheel sizes later on at the, that segment of the show, um, but if you don't want to spend the extra 1500 to go for the 19-inch options, US that is, then just take the, the aero cap off. And you've got some nice wheels. And there's been some information that just came out from engineering at Tesla that says that if you put those caps on, especially when you're doing some longer highway drives, you can achieve up to 10% efficiency. Um, you know, on a 300-mile range another 30 miles that's that's pretty decent for just throwing those caps on well we don't know whether right. the epa ratings of course mm -hmm. include the caps or not so mm -hmm. we'll have to leave that's that true. kind of open for interpretation at this point but uh yeah for those of you who don't like the uh, ugly wheel covers uh they're fully <laughs> removable you take them off you get a nice alloy a gunmetal gray underneath mm -hmm. so uh yeah so now we think that the the lug nut covers and the little tesla emblem you don't come with it no the, I, I think that's been confirmed. I, yeah, I have somebody yeah. on the inside that told me that okay. they are not uh, but included. But they're, they're prevalent in aftermarket or even through Tesla Direct. I don't yeah, know the little caps them. you can get through yeah. service okay. uh, for the emblem in the mm -hmm. middle and the, yeah. and the lug covers you can get pretty much anywhere. So it'll still be less than 1500 US for, <laughs> for changing out the wheels. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for people for uncovering, all the pun intended, uh, the aero wheel for us. Okay, and what else came out recently uh, was information after the reveal about the or about the the media launch um, was the key card access. So we, we saw some spy shots prior, and there was a lot of uh, guessing around, but it's been confirmed that you can uh, unlock and lock your um, Model Three without the use of a key fob. So no more key fob in the Model Three. The key fob is dead. There is dead. It's gone. You can use your smartphone. So if you have a, an iPhone or an Android, there's an application that you can download that connects through Bluetooth and that you can do different settings. And you, you talk about that in our UI um, uh, video that you'll put up soon. Mentioned some of that, that you can walk up and automatically unlock the doors when you get in range and, and lock so forth when you approach and leave. And it's linked to your account. So there's some additional security for that. So it's not everybody that can get an app that can actually do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but but if you don't have your phone, if the phone di battery dies, which we know with uh, smartphones, they can die quite fast. <laughs> um, there's also that key card with the NFC, which is what you talked about, on the, I think, on the last show as well. Mm -hmm. And you swipe that to the B pillar and that uh, gets you open. So it's pretty cool technology. Yeah, I think there's still some confusion a little bit, though, because some people are still tweeting at me and on the forums and on YouTube's uh, comments, of course. Um, you have to remember here, the key card situation with the Model 3 is not the primary mechanism. The primary mechanism is going to be through your smartphone your mm -hmm. because the Bluetooth Bluetooth, which is what you're going to be used to um, to authenticate against the car, has a longer range, uh, 25, 30 feet. So that's what is going to be used to actually unlock the vehicle okay. as you approach it. The key card, which is like your NFC key card, which is like anything like a debit or credit card that has a little chip and pin thing in it, that is what's used to as a backup for the car. So okay. if you forget your smartphone or the battery dies or whatever, you can still unlock the car uh, with the key card. And then the key card gets put into the cup holder area that acts as authentication so you can actually put the car in drive and actually drive it. Now, before you ask <laughs> uh, what happens if you take the key card out of the cup holder, I actually did that. The car didn't stop uh, exactly, during the yes. test ride. It doesn't so have it's, to be there. It's just yeah. an authentication thing to put it into drive. So um, the other thing, too, we're getting a lot of comments. Uh, am I going to be able to use an Apple Watch to unlock the car? Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, this is NFC. That's what's used for Apple Pay. Yep. 
Um, I asked an engineer about that and he didn't really give me an answer. He basically said, use your imagination. So if Tesla does open the APIs uh, to be able to access that, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do some kind of uh, pairing or whatever with NFC other devices to the car. But like Makes I said, sense. it's, yeah. But like I said, it's, it's a backup to the primary, which is your smartphone. So just try and keep that in mind. But uh, it just shows that Tesla's going in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And it could preclude some of the stuff that's actually going to happen with the ride sharing network. So we'll have to keep an eye on this, but it's, yep. uh, it's pretty neat. So it shows Forward. a different way of thinking. On the theme of the Model 3 and the advancements that it's made in the automotive industry, Bloomberg came out with a nice article called The Model 3 Changes Everything. And it's just great to see these other uh, outlets picking up on the Model 3. They did a road test, so they got access to one, which they gave it a great re overall review and praise for the Model 3. They also reconfirmed the target market for the 3, which is what we've been saying all along. It's not an entry-level car. It's a you know, compact luxury sedan. That's where it's aimed at. It's to go up against BMW and Mercedes, you know, against their $35,000 plus sedans like the 320i or the C300 mm -hmm. for those manufacturers. Uh, but there was a study that came out that somebody put together some of the numbers on range per mile or price per mile of vehicle range from an EV perspective. And the Model 3 comes out on top at about a hundred, just under $142 US of price per mile. So that's when you buy the car, how much range you get out of that vehicle. They do the numbers, do the math, and it comes out to about $142. Whereas the low end uh, or the most expensive is the Mercedes B-Class, which is I think $450 per mile of range. So there's a nice chart that you can look at there. Again, just reconfirming what we already know about the Model 3. So are those who are waiting like us for the Model 3s to come, you've got time to ponder, gee, is this really a good investment in, in buying this? Should I look at something else? Well, Autolist came out with this report uh, recently about depreciation of vehicles comparing the Model 3 to its com competition in its class. And they project, again, they future project that this is going to be a best-in-class depreciation. What they're saying is that they think the Model 3 will lose about 29% of its value over 50, at 50,000 miles and 50% of its value after 100,000 miles. And you can do the conversion into kilometers if you need to. That sounds like a lot, but when you look at the competitors out there or the ICE vehicles that are out today from Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, uh, they're higher. They range from 35 to 37% of value loss um, at 50K miles and 53 to 60% value loss. So... Um, it, it's nice to see that we're making this investment and I think most of us are planning on keeping our Model 3s for quite a long time. Like I'm certainly going to tax the Tesla warranty <laughs> for sure. I'm gonna, if it's eight years, I'm going eight years. Uh, but it's just re reconfirming that the Model 3 does hit the mark when you look at consumer expectations. And that's what it's been all about. So Tesla is living up to, to those expectations. Yeah, it certainly shows that the, there's some forward thinking on this. I can't, again, I just want to reiterate that the, these are just like expectations here mm -hmm. it's, it's not scientific by any stretch at this point but uh you know the model s for example in its segment has actually held this value quite well compared yes. to the other car i mean keep in mind oh, yeah. luxury cars lose the value quite a bit faster than more of a you know a, a middle class car or an entry luxury uh, vehicle segment so uh, you know we'll see how it goes but we know the batteries last a long, a long time so you don't have to worry about the battery that's right and some good news for those folks living in california you guys get all the good news and the nice weather <laughs> Jeez. Um, now with some more incentives that have just been released, you can get a Model 3 for about $25,000 US if you really want to. So when you factor in the federal tax credit, which is still got lots of steam in it for the Model 3 people that are waiting for, to get their cars, so the reservationists in California, you add in the, the CARB Clean Vehicle Rebate Program of $2,500. And um, it, it, that program is income-based, but you can get, as we said, another $10,000 in rebates uh, or credits towards a Model 3. And that uh, that program also works for the Smart and uh, Car and some of the other EVs that are out there. But they've they've just come out with the adding the Model 3 to that program. So for those that are waiting um, to get their deliveries, because we know that employees are getting it first, and then they'll start going to Tesla owners and so forth in California, um, you'll have there'll be lots of wind in these sales as far as getting rebates, so it'll be uh, it'll be nice to be able to see that. Yeah, well, California will get these cars first, so we'll see how this goes. But it uh, looks promising, and that equals, Makes for an affordable and, and that's car. that's almost about what we're going to get in Ontario, at least what right now what's applicable at fourteen thousand dollars Canadian. When you do the exchange math, it's about the same. Well, so. plus our tax, which is higher though. Our so. tax is higher. That, that's yeah. another show. We won't get into yeah. that. Somebody's talking about that somewhere. Yeah. So good news for you guys in California.
Moving on to some more Tesla news. Is, uh, some, we keep talking about the supercharger growth, so we won't go into a lot of detail on that. I think everybody's aware that they're doubling their efforts worldwide to grow that network. Uh, but there was an estimator that's been put up on their site now so that if you are planning uh, when you get your Model 3 to do some longer distance trips, you can actually plug some numbers in and, and get, a, get an idea of what that would cost you to use the, the supercharger. Now, we know that um, they will offer 400 kilowatt hours of free credit charging every year, and that equates to about four to six times of full charging, roughly. Um, so that you can kind of get an idea of, uh, of what you won't have to spend and then after that what you would spend based on trips. But you can talk about that program again. There's still a little bit of confusion as far as how that's going to work for SNX people as well. Yeah, you should mention that I'll put the link here in the, in the show description. Uh, this cost estimator, by the way, is not on the Model 3 page. You have to go to the mm-hmm. Model S page. I'll put a link True. so yeah. you can go and play with it. S or X tabs, tabs for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So make sure you go and play with it. It's quite neat, uh, but it gives you a pretty good idea of, uh, of what kind of range you can expect and, and, the, and the cost. Mm-hmm. The other thing, too, you got to keep in mind that unless you use a referral code, you're going to only get 400 kilowatt hours. So right now, because the referral code program I think goes to the end of the year you would be silly not to buy a Model S or Model X without using somebody's referral code because if you use that you get free supercharging it's one of the three, right. uh, one of the perks so it doesn't apply to Model yeah. 3 there are no referral codes to be used on Model 3 there's no discounts uh, there's just no margin in that car to be able to do that yeah. so if anybody's looking at a Model S or a Model X make sure you use someone's referral code uh, to be able to get your free supercharging but, it's important uh, yeah and you get a thousand bucks off. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, we talked about you know Tesla's uh, expansion on the supercharger. Well, from a Canadian perspective, uh, yeah, Canada, uh, they've opened two new Tesla supercharger locations. One in Nanaimo, BC. So for our friends out in British Columbia, that's good news for you. And also in Edmonton at the Southgate Center, they've opened up a new charger, a new supercharger specifically. That, that makes big news here in Canada. In the U.S., ah, they're opening up all the time. But for us guys, hey, one they're or two few and far between. Deal. It's a big deal for us, exactly. <laughs> but also another big deal is our federal government is, uh, is working with some private companies as well, energy providers, uh, and they're sponsoring a program to install 34 new DC fast charging stations. These are not Tesla supercharging, but they're DC fast charging. We don't have specs on whether they're 350 kilowatt or, or what, but they're, they're, they're going to be at least level three for, for at some some sort mm-hmm. and they're going to be they're really focusing on that gap between ontario and manitoba and if you've looked at the supercharger map there's a big gap to try to get out of our province and get a, to if you wanted to stay in canada to drive across it on the trans canada there's a large gap of any tesla supercharger so you're you're forced to go through the u.s on uh, some of those mid-states to, to, to be able to, to keep your car charged to, if you want to go across. So they're looking to put these stations in by 2019. It's a program. They're throwing uh, millions of dollars into this funding. Uh, but it's going to cover about 3,000 kilometers. So it's not just that stretch. It's going to be a little bit more coverage. So it's good news for us. Because yeah. as we say, you're not just stuck with a Tesla supercharger. You're charging at home most of the time, and then you have other options. Yeah, so if you're looking at a Model 3 or you have an S or an X, whatever, it would be a very good idea for you to invest in the uh, Tesla Chatamo adapter, which Mm -hmm. is that big, ugly contraption. Because that does not come with it, right? Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So these fast chargers will be most likely a combination of uh, CCS, you Mm -hmm. know, charge combined standard, as well as the Chatamo. So make sure you get the Chatamo adapter if you're planning on doing these long distance travels. It's a good safety net to have. It's a, you know, it's a cheap price to pay for $450 just for safety safety net. And of course, on the adoption of charging stations, it's no surprise to find out that the United Kingdom is leading in dominance of that. In fact, there's a trend now when you look at some analysts have put together a report. In fact, Nissan uh, did some number crunching on this recently that they predict that um, EVSEs will outnumber gas stations in the UK by 2020. That's a pretty significant fact because it's a combination of gas stations declining um, they're closing a lot, and that's declining down. So they think there'll be around 7,900 gas stations in the UK by 2020. That magic number again, we yeah. keep talking about, yeah. it's going to be a big year. And then, of course, the increasing EVSC's uh, adoption and expansion that they're building, that they'll get to over 7,900 by then. So it's interesting to see that the UK may be first in hitting that uh, that milestone. This is not surprising at all. We had this conversation before the show that, uh, you know, the thing with the installing EVSC's or, or chargers for, for 
electric vehicles mm -hmm. is that it's largely just a matter of a permit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do environmental studies like you have to do with a gasoline station. Most areas don't want to have a gas station put into their neighborhoods. And after 30 years, you got to dig up the tanks and clean all that stuff up. So yeah. the, pr the proliferation of EVSEs or charging stations is just going to keep growing. So it's going to easily outnumber gas stations in the matter of just a handful of years. So you'll see. Yeah. And finally, on the EV news front, um, there's a global survey that was just completed by a company called Dahlia Research. They surveyed 43,000 people in 52 different countries. Pretty big survey. I'm surprised I didn't get hit up for that. I would have responded. <laughs> but anyway, um, talking, asking questions about EV adoption and all kinds of different things about what your pattern for your next vehicles are. And a large proponent of those, about 40% or so, said that they're going to buy an electric vehicle within the next five years. Um, and again, that's a combination of a lot of things that we talk about all the time that we've just talked about this show, so, you know, starting to get to cost parity, the ranges are increasing, the prices are coming down, the reliability, the, the proliferation of charging stations and networks, all these are factors, the incentives, of course, that countries are re re retaining and a lot of countries are adding more incentives to continue adoption. So these are all helping to spur those decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think one of the highest countries are for for um, for leading? So 40%, I think, is the average, but there are some countries that are actually higher than that. Uh, probably some of the Asian countries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we know that China, it's no secret that China has been really active in uh, in EV adoption. They've, they, In fact, we don't talk a lot about, about the Chinese models and the cars that are coming out by BYD and these other companies, but they are. I think they have the most electric vehicles on the road of any country in the world, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And it's a, it's a big, big industry that's continuing to grow, but they're looking at 58% uh, of adoption of, in the next five years. They have incentives as well. Thailand's though the highest at 66%, wow, which is surprising. interesting. I wouldn't think there'd be a lot of infrastructure, but they seem to be building that up. Uh, our North American uh, uh, folks here in Canada, the U.S., we're at about 31 percent and uh, Mexico is about 39 for adoption. Uh, Germany, which is surprising, is about 22 percent. Now they're they're making a lot of hoopla about, uh, gonna about you know, stopping the the, uh, the sales of ice cars and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, they're still a driving mentality. So it's, it takes a little bit of time to 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 right that ship and to turn that tanker. You know, uh, Angela Merkel is making so. a lot of uh, noise over there to get that uh, adoption done. She's pushing the yeah. German manufacturers. Yeah. To and we've talked about some of their expansion as well on previous shows and the partnerships with energy providers. So uh, the things are happening. Even Saudi Arabia, 40, 45 percent, which wow. is interesting to see some of these countries and we've had talked about that before now the lowest being japan and i was a little surprised at that maybe that's just because they've already got a high rate of adoption and it's just they're kind of running out or i, I don't know hmm. the that's catalyst question, for that yeah. number i didn't read the report but uh, just interesting to see some of these numbers but really the, the most common barrier right now to EV adoption and we hear it all the time when we talk to people is range anxiety and then of course gas prices are still relatively low as as compared to what they were a few years ago so people are going eh. I'll keep my SUV for now at that point. Or not just even an SUV. I mean, there, there's practical aspects for that, but I'll keep my ice car because there's not really <laughs> nothing there yet. So, But it's coming. Well, I think it falls into the category of uh, like the, the public's perception, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that the tipping point has really arrived on the manufacturing side because all the manufacturers have announced plans to go EV, mm -hmm. but the tipping point hasn't arrived in the public's mind yet. And it's just starting exactly. to change. So I, I expect this number to actually change over the next uh, year or so. Uh, wouldn't surprise me it actually goes uh, even higher. Mm -hmm. All right, switching gears, let's see what the other guys out there are doing. And of course, we talked about the LEAF earlier on in the show, LEAF 2.0, as we're calling it for now. We are eagerly awaiting their announcement coming up in just a couple of weeks, early September, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, at one of the auto shows, they're going to come out with an announcement. Uh, but there's, of course, stuff been leaked. There's been some spy photos. There's been some some uh, renderings as well on the Leaf. It's a, it's a nice looking car. It's certainly yeah. different than the old one. It, to me, it looks like a smaller version of a Toyota Venza. Mm. It's not ugly at all. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Nice. Uh, there's been some potential pricing that's been leaked as well. Uh, the S model coming just under 30K. These are US numbers. Uh, the SV at uh, 32.5 roughly and the SL at 36.2. I mean, that makes it competitive from a pricing perspective. However, I, we don't have confirmation, but I think some of the information that's come out on that is that it will come out with only roughly around a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack to start with potentially a 60 as their higher model. Uh, that hasn't been confirmed, but that's what the estimations are. I'm personally a little bit disappointed in the 40. I think they should have come right out with a 60 and, and, and come right into a competitive model. But uh, 
we know that the leaf is filled has been great at spurring EV adoption. It's been you know over a quarter million and climbing probably over three hundred thousand leaves now worldwide sold. So it's That's been a, a great. It's been leading from an EV probably not not uh, in China but certainly the rest of the world. Um, so we'll see what happens. I think the number one thing that I hope Nissan fixed on the leaf, and I think most owners out there will probably agree. Hopefully they put an active thermal management system in the battery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think I'm not sure if they're retaining the same battery architecture that they, they have they changed. Have. They mm -hmm. have changed it, but mm -hmm. it's still not uh, like an active uh, mm -hmm. system like Tesla employs. Uh, right. Because that's one of the key ingredients that makes the Tesla battery last so long mm -hmm. and do so well is because they figured out how to keep it warm or right. cool. Plus their form factor. We're talking about cells like this versus they're almost like a pack, like a thin. Well, there's architecture, a, yeah, right? well, there's yeah. pluses and minuses mm -hmm. to the architecture itself, mm -hmm. but thermal management is the most critical thing about maintaining the actual yeah. life of a battery pack. And I'm sure Tis, uh, Tesla, I mean, Nissan has yeah. has learned a lot from, you know, some of the steps that they've taken with the Leaf, and hopefully they've corrected that. So as soon as we have more information, we'll be first to report on that. And hopefully in the fall sometime, some of the dealers will get one and we'll take one for a drive. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely take one for a drive. And we'll do a road test on it for yeah. sure. Now, BMW, of course, I know you like the BMW i3. I do. We talked about that before. It's a neat little car. There's a rumor coming out that they're going to look at increasing the range uh, as early as potentially later next year of uh, 2018. Uh, currently, the i3 has a 33 kilowatt hour pack, but they're looking to potentially increase that 60%. Um, and they, they have some numbers thrown around about 120 amp hour pack. So that we, we, we did some number crunching just before the show started, and we're predicting around a 50 52 45 50 somewhere in there yeah kilowatt hour pack so we have no idea on pricing but i mean obviously we talked about this before it was nice to see the the i3 come out hasn't been a great seller for them and i certainly hasn't uh, been doing what the lease been doing for nissan as an example it's an expensive car with with lower range but some neat features in the in the carbon fiber in the ergonomics in the materials um in the efficiencies that it has within it so We'll see what happens. Yeah, the the engineering and the technology behind this car are stellar. Mm -hmm. I mean, looks aside, because I know it's very polarizing. <laughs> you either love it or you don't. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and I get that. That's fine. Yeah. But if you look at it from an engineering and uh, sort of a design aspect, it's a brilliant car. So, But, you know, its major shortcoming really has always been range. Mm -hmm. So if they can fix that and maybe do something about the pricing to get it a little bit more competitive, I think uh, the i3 uh, will certainly do a lot better than it ever has. Yeah. And it needs some regen. They need to be able to change the regen. Yeah, the regen is very strong it's, it's on the i3. Strong, so. And I know you don't happen to like it. And I yeah. know my wife doesn't like yeah. it. But it's uh, actually from an aspect, from, from driving the car uh, from um, uh, like a single pedal aspect, it, it works brilliantly. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for some people, it's too strong. So yeah, yeah give us the, uh, the opportunity of changing that so. to something a little more shallow. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We talked about Audi and their e-tron Quattro uh, that they're coming out with before, so we won't spend a lot of time. There's been some other pictures that have just come out, some uh, camouflage shots, so you can have a look at what it uh, looks like. So it, they're getting closer to that production where they want to start next year, mm -hmm. producing these out of a plant in Belgium. Um, looks like a nice you know, SUV-ish type of vehicle with a 95-kilowatt-hour battery pack is what they've told, uh, around a 300-mile range. I'm not sure if that's an EP range or not. Um, I'm guessing it is with that battery pack size. It should be able to get at least that. Mm -hmm. But um, that'll be an interesting vehicle to see what when it comes out with. Audi's always had pretty good, you know, engineering. So. Yeah, the SUV market's pretty big, so it, it doesn't surprise mm -hmm. me that they're attacking that first. You know, mm -hmm. the Q5 and the Q7 have done extremely well. So if yeah. they if they target that car right into that market, it should do quite well because you know the SUVs mm -hmm. are big sellers. Now we talked in the show about the lack of. Mazda kind of doing anything on the EV space. Where the heck are they? Well, a recent article, they seem to be collaborating with Toyota to look at a joint venture to create electric vehicles at a U.S. factory. Um, they're talking about 2019 timeframes and uh, Toyota, of course, 2020 to, to delve more into the EV industry to build, uh, to bring all electric vehicles to market there. And uh, they're co-developing, I guess, from a cost sharing and sharing of knowledge perspective, uh, electric vehicle technologies and vehicle designs. So we'll see what happens. I yeah, mean, they've... That's uh, not uncommon not with uncommon. Mazda because they right. used to do that with Ford, of course, mm -hmm. with the with their, um, the Tribute, I think it was yes, called, which was just tribute. an escape. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's right. So, but uh, good to see them finally step into the finally. game some way because they've been pretty quiet and we've been pretty vocal. On you know what would be really that, cool so. is uh, a Mazda Miata electric. I love the Miata. 
That uh, would be super cool. The, the new Fiat 124, I mean, the re-imaging re- <laughs> of that. I'm an old Fiat guy, too, so uh, that's pretty cool. But, yeah, I remember the, the in British Racing Green. Gotta uh, have it. No, 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 that Mazda Red is spectacular. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll wait and see what happens. I would not be surprised if we see something Looking forward there. to it. So uh, good for you, Mazda. Keep it up, and we'll continue to follow what goes on there. Mercedes now we've talked about them and and um, what they're doing you know they've got a new division they've got a lot of cars that they'll be coming out with but of course they have to unveil some fabulous all electric concept um, just to blow everybody away and just to throw it out there as a big <laughs> carrot uh, calling it the Vision Mercedes Maybach 6 Cabriolet concept that's a mouthful um, it's a nice looking car. It's pretty cool looking, uh, anticipating over 200 mile range with uh, onboard DC charging equipped up to 350 kilowatt charging. No ETA pricing, anything else. It's just more of a kind a of concept. A, it's a concept with some <laughs> nice pictures that are out there. If you want to Google that and check it out, it's a good, neat, neat looking car. Just thought we'd throw it into the show because it's cool looking. Because but, it's cool looking. Now but it's, it's not going to make it to market. I'm predicting a $150,000 price tag, but with Maybach it's slap a Maybach, to it. Man. It's, it's going to be double that. It's going to be double that. So we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll stay tuned. We'll see. Yeah, that's. I don't see Rolls Royce or Bentley getting into the game yet. That's we'll, have to uh, well keep at least Jaguar right? is getting Jaguar, in with the ice. That's so. true. So yeah, but if you're, you start getting into this price tag, the 200k plus, uh, wouldn't be surprised to see those guys jump in. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. And we can't have a show nowadays. It seems like without talking about the VW microbus. Microbus. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps popping up on the internet. Uh, a few news articles keep coming out that this thing is still on the books for production in 2022. As I said before the show, if this thing were available today, I would buy one. I've got my my piece and my my you know hang tight stickers all ready to Take put on the back of it. And my tie-dye shirt hanging in the closet, <laughs> ready to jump. I can let my hair grow along again as I used to have it uh, many millenniums ago. Uh, I mean, it's a neat, you know, we've seen the concept shots. It's E-buzz. a neat look at the eBuzz. We've mm-hmm. seen how it's flexible. You can change the interior around, do different things with it. It's got those funky colors. It's got that neat retro design. Uh, estimated to 111. That's a neat number. I'm not sure why they came up with that. A kilowatt hour battery pack with over 270 mile range. So it's got, I mean, it certainly has the floor uh, space to put something like that in there. But uh, it's a ways away. I sure hope they put this thing in production because, you know, Volkswagen, I'm sorry, but you've been teasing microbuses since 2001. I think it's time for you guys to actually, you know, do this. Do this. Please do this. Bring it before 2022. <laughs> Guarantee people are, are going to buy this thing. It'll sell well. Yeah, it, that, it's certainly in San Francisco. Oh. You saw a few when you oh, were yeah. there, right? Peace, man. That's it. <laughs> but anyway, it's a fun. Check it out. Uh, you, it's pretty cool looking. Yeah. All right, it's mailbag time. Mailbag, we love mailbag. What do we got on tap for today? Well, we've got a few here today, so thanks to everybody for sending them in. Let's start off with um, Eric. He's in uh, Burleson, Texas, um, south of Fort Works. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. South of Fort Works. Thanks for sending in the email. Um, he's got some thoughts about the 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 lasting impact of Tesla's technology, like over 200,000 miles as far as repair and drivetrain reliability compared to an ICE. And we've talked about this before, but um, it, it is stellar when you compare it to an ICE perspective. That's not even taking the Model 3 into account, just currently with the S and the S. Yeah, I just tweeted out uh, an article uh, that just came out. It was just updated, I think, on August 23rd. I'll put a link here in the show description. Uh, and they really look at the, uh, the the Tesla battery pack degradation situation, mm-hmm. and it's still looking exceptionally uh, good. Um, we're still talking, uh, you know, 96% capacity over 220,000 miles. Yeah. Again, the warranty on the Model 3, for example, is 100,000, 122, I think, for the long-range model. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you're really going to have anything to worry about. Even when the warranty expires, you're still going to get really good capacity over the long term. Again, mm-hmm. Tesla is a company that likes to take care of people. So even mm-hmm. if there's little issues, they tend to be pretty good about the warranty situation. So, yeah, it's a valid concern, of course. Was there something else on there about? Yes, yeah, the, uh, about repairs in an accident. So from a bodywork perspective, and we've I think we've had this before. And now that we know that's more steel compared to aluminum, that question basically should be answered, that it's going to probably be cost competitive to what's out there today. Yeah, right? it looks like it's not going to be an issue now for mm-hmm. Model 3. So, uh, but but a good uh, good questions. Thanks for sending that yeah, in, Yeah, thanks, thanks uh, Eric, for sending that in. Appreciate it. Uh, we've got another email from Jeff. Uh, Jeff doesn't say where he's from, but uh, thanks for sending this in. Now, he asked a lot of questions, uh, which I think have been answered by now. This was uh, an email from earlier this month about the Model 3 interior, 
um, less soft touch surfaces, metal is a metal roof standard. A lot of this has been answered, absolutely. The metal roof is part of the standard option. Um, even though they're not building any of those models yet, it's part of the standard model. Um, all they're all glass roof. Uh, do they have a heavy tint, UV and infra infrared light protection? Yes, I can answer do. this. Absolutely. They yes, do. Absolutely. I asked Tesla directly a few months ago on the current S uh, what the in, what the UV protection. They say it's ninety nine point nine percent. Yeah, all of that heavy mm -hmm. tinting was all developed for the Model X because of that crazy windshield that yeah. they've got on the front. So they've actually applied that to the all glass roof option that's standard on the Model S and all of the glass on the Model Three. So they're you know don't worry about this, folks. It's mm -hmm. it's taken care of. Um, Elon just tweeted out he was watching the eclipse, sitting in a Model <laughs> S with the all glass roof with just a plain that's pair true. of sunglasses, I about that, yeah. and I'm sure he's not blind yet so <laughs> we haven't heard any screaming he's okay on that. exactly so uh jeff i would encourage you to check out the web look at that google photo page as well just google model 3 photos or uh, a page and it'll come up there's a lot of stuff on there the motor trend did a pretty extensive shoot yeah. again on the interior it'll answer a lot of questions even there's been some recent shots about that that door unlock button there's some nice bright daytime shots you can really see that button on the top of the of the arm now that we talked about earlier so you can get a lot of questions answered he asked about doing a show comparing the bolt and model 3 interior spaces and high speed charging we've talked about the bolt we, we did a test drive on that we videoed our, our impressions of it from the auto show look at our show back in february yeah, march february. of this year mm -hmm. where we talk about that but all that data is on there so we don't really want to spend a full show doing that but again you know we have our thoughts the bolt's a good car we're glad that it's out there but it's it's not the same as a model three and you need to understand those differentiations on that uh but thanks uh jeff for sending in those questions hopefully uh, we answered those um so we have another question from uh, this person does not say their first name so i'm not sure if it's a mr or ms um but they're asking about if the cruise control only comes with the premium package and we there's been a lot of talk about that so i think we've got question. clarity on that correct yeah so i just put out a video um yeah. this week uh, and I take some time to clarify the autopilot situation on the Model 3 because there's a lot of confusion. So in a nutshell, autopilot hardware and software are two different things. The hardware is built into every Tesla that, that they currently make. That's the S, the X, and the 3. If you do not pay for autopilot software functions, you get basic cruise control. Basic cruise control is set of speed and the car drives that ways. It does not auto steer. It doesn't do um, traffic aware cruise control, mm -hmm. which is slowing right. down automatically, maintaining Spacing. distance. Mm -hmm. All of, the, and, and the confusion's really coming from the fact that Tesla doesn't really talk about autopilot that much unless you really buy enhanced autopilot. So um, if you really value some of the enhanced functions, and please watch the video because I really go into detail on this and really explain it, but basic cruise control is included on the Model 3. If you want the fancy stuff, you really got to pony up the five thousand dollars. So there you go. So that answers that question. Um, he asks if we know if the premium package includes a heated steering wheel. Um, oh, there's no there's mention heated of heated seating. So in the premium, you don't get you get all the seats heated, front and back. Uh, whereas in the standard, it's just the front that are heated. Uh, but we we have not got confirmation that there's a heated steering wheel. No, and I think um, what's Tesla is doing right now is they, they put up the kind of the bare minimum at this point on the on the uh, frequently asked questions page on the Model 3. Actually, there's a link that goes to the press kit. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's on the press kit page for the Model 3. Yes, sir. More detailed specs of this car will come out once they actually start producing cars for customers. Right now, it's mostly for employees. They just want to put out the bare minimum. Um, and employees aren't really leaking. Like they're not opening yeah, their cars to people. They're being strangely silent about the situation. And they, so. they could be told for that for now. I'm it, not sure. Exactly. So. so we'll have to keep an eye on mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, on the S and the X, you, you have to pay for the premium uh, mm -hmm. package on those cars to get the heated steering wheel. Again, there's no mention of that in the premium package for the Model 3. So um, we're just, all we have to do is kind of go with what Tesla says. So the steering wheel at this point is absent, MIA. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm hoping it's included. And nobody's seen, uh, nobody's found a button uh, on the UI. Exactly. Control, right, for so, that yet. But so. again, it could be uh, hidden because, like I said, some of the stuff mm -hmm. on the Model Three hasn't been exposed yet. So right. we'll keep an eye on that. And I know that uh, you also asked a question about snow tires uh, in another email, and we've talked about this before. If you are in a winter climate area, uh, we strongly recommend that oh, you yes. get snow tires for any vehicle that you have electric or ice doesn't really matter they're worth the investment if you if you need to drive in the winter you get a good amount of snow if you get a little bit here and there probably not all seasons will cut it but uh certainly um the, and there was some recent information that came out about the validity of of rear wheel drive in an ev that it really is a powerful 
uh, because of the way the weight's distributed that you're going to get really good benefits. It's not your traditional, you know, Ford Mustang kind of fishtailing and you got to throw a bunch of bricks in the yeah, back to, yeah, yeah. to weigh we it down. We have traction so. control. The traction other thing you have to remember too mm-hmm. about winter tires is that you might look at the expense and go, oh, that's a lot of money. But don't forget, you're only using them about four or four months of the year. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, winter tires are going to last you yeah. for years and years yeah. and years. So yeah, I, my wife is still operating on the first set of tires. Yeah. And Same with us. Yeah. I mean, they look brand new. So, yeah. So thanks for that question. Um, yeah, thanks for the email. And lastly, we have David from, David does not say where he's from, but thanks, David, for sending in this email as well. Um, the pros and cons of the 18 and 19 inch wheels. So we talked about the wheels earlier in the, the options that you have on the configurator. Um, and that's a great question because, uh, I've been bouncing around with that, but I do like, you know, the standard wheels that'll come with it. But what, what do you get out of that? Well, you know, looks aside. Looks aside. Um, uh-huh. okay. So what happens with the tire is that the more sidewall you have, the smoother the ride is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that a lot of people like the larger wheels and the skinnier tires because it makes the car look sporty and stuff. Mm-hmm. But what ends up happening with that is you get a harsher ride and you don't get as much range. Right. I don't know why that particular part is, but uh, but it's more pronounced on the S and the X given that they're much heavier cars. Mm-hmm. And the spread on those vehicles is actually two inches. It's not one inch. Right. Mm-hmm. So on the Model 3... We haven't driven it ourselves uh, with the no. different wheels, so we don't have really an opinion at this point. I don't particularly think that one inch is going to make all that much of a difference in the world. I know that some people, uh, like Ryan McCaffrey, who's made a big point about the fact that he really wants the 20-inch wheels yeah. like he saw on the prototype, uh, that's definitely going to be a harsher ride. But you some know, people, turbine wheels or something. Exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. some people are really going to want that. But at the end of the day, maybe one inch is not going to make that much of a difference as far as ride conditions are concerned. But uh, there's people out there who know a lot more about this than I do. But uh, we'll have to keep a, an eye on that and see what happens. But that, that's really it is in a nutshell, is, is, a, is the ride situation. It's a ride and slight less efficiencies from a larger wheel uh, as far as range goes. And it could be, you know half a percent or something really low i think i know where some of this is coming from because there was Mm -hmm. that video that was put out um, by that owner with the model s and he was saying that uh you know it was chewing up his tires yes you have to remember with a model s i mean we're talking a 46 4700 pound vehicle Mm -hmm. on very skinny tires that's really heavy so what you end up getting is a situation where the tires are the camber is more pronounced on it Mm -hmm. so it tends to eat the inside of the tires a lot more i mean then the the accelerator pedal tends to get pushed a lot more in that car as well so that that adds to the problem so what happens with a model (laughs) less with the 21 inch wheels i mean that car's decide you know is designed to destroy tires so uh, you know this is a model 3 is not a performance vehicle like the model i mean it's 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 not a slow car but it's not a high performance vehicle so i don't think the tire situation is going to be quite as pronounced on this car it's going to be you know more like a normal Mm -hmm. normal vehicle so uh, budget for tires anyways but uh yeah i wouldn't worry about it too too much at this point he also may ask a question about that he made a a uh he made an observation that he didn't see any sort of antenna on, on the Model 3, like oh, yeah, a shark right. fin or anything. So how do you get radio reception on that? Yeah, so I, I've had play? people ask me this be, uh, before. Mm-hmm. Um, I question. think the, the question is most cars have like a little shark fin yeah. these days, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tesla Very doesn't do that for aerodynamics purposes. But what they do, uh, and if I remember correctly on the Model S, the antennas are built into the mirrors. Mm. Oh, is so, that where they are? Because yeah. I've seen them built in the windshields before in the past. And, yeah, you know, that yeah. Kind of Tesla stuff, the puts the Wi-Fi and, yeah. and those things in the ah. mirrors So because, you know, look, it's outside the vehicle. So I would suspect this is exactly what's happening on the Model 3. There you go. So thanks, David, for those questions. For everybody that uh, asked the questions and, of course, uh, keep sending them in. We love to get them in. And a lot Please of them do. we answer, uh, but there's a few we want to bring on the show to let everybody know. So thanks for that. All right. Well, that wraps up the show. Um, of course, we can't end the show without talking again about our friends at EVNX. That's right. There's this book. If you mm-hmm. haven't seen it yet, please check it out. It's called Getting Ready for Your Model 3, and it's available on Amazon. But EVNX have a special promotion. So if you go to their website, it's E-V-N-X, com. You put the book in your shopping cart, and if you use the coupon code GR4M3, You get a free license plate. It's a $10 value. Just pay for shipping. Make sure you add the license plate to your shopping cart and use the uh, code so that it uh, discounts the the license plate frame. Anyways, uh, really great book. About 140 pages long. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with EVs, it really goes a long way to explaining some of the features that you need to know uh things like concepts and everything. yeah exactly mm-hmm. as well as getting ready as far as your mm-hmm. charging situation is concerned mm-hmm. because these cars are going to start coming and if you can't charge it properly you're going to be in a pickle so i just read sure 50 can... bucks lower for the tesla home charger now yeah that's the thing too for those of you who haven't seen mm-hmm. it i did a video some months ago yeah. on my uh, tesla wall connector installation mm-hmm. i encourage you to go and watch that i'll put the link of course in the uh, video description you can watch that um 
it's actually that model that that I bought, which is the 24 foot cord. They sell it in two two cord lengths, eight foot and 24 mm-hmm. foot. Um, the 24 foot has now come down uh, 50 dollars, so it's uh, a cost parity with the uh, eight foot. Mm-hmm. Really recommend you buy the eight or the 24 foot. Of course, for sure. Why not? It's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's better that ways. Um, you don't need it. It's just there for convenience because the right. car comes with a UMC and you can use that to charge your car. But for mm-hmm. convenience to be able to come in and not have to deal with the UMC, taking it out of the car, packing it back in and just plug in with the charge. Yeah. Uh, it was worth it for me. So, But you don't necessarily need it. Any uh, level two charger you can buy in the market will work just fine with the Model 3. So yeah. So check out EV Annex and uh, their stuff. And I know that they're working on coming out with some Model 3 accessories and They've upgrades. already and, showed up uh, on Tesla's site. There's yeah. some cables. There's some sunshades available. Yeah. Some really nice uh, car yeah. covers, interior and exterior car covers. So check those out. Again, I'll put them in the link, but it's it's, it's shop.tesla.com. Yeah. You can go take a look there. And we'll bring more stuff when we get it, when we have yes. to talk about we, it. Well, we're guys, actually so. talking with Evan X uh, mm-hmm. quite closely. We are going to be working with those folks to uh, start bringing you some Model 3 accessories as soon as they get their hands on a Model 3. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I want to make a point of that uh, to help with the guys at Evan X. If anyone in California knows of a Tesla employee who has taken a delivery of a Model 3 who are willing to let Evan X take a look at the car to take measurements and photos, please get in touch with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll give you the email address here in a second. Yeah. Or if you'd like, get in touch with Matthew Pressman at Evan X and uh, they will help you out. Um, they're willing to fly somebody down at their cost to, uh, to take a look at that. Because the sooner they can get somebody down there to take a look at the car, the sooner they can start bringing accessories to the right. market. And uh, they're very, very eager to do that. And we want to help yeah. them out uh, and get the word out for all of you who are looking for Model 3 accessories. And they, so, yeah, and they currently make some really good quality they, accessories. They do, the and they're just yeah. chomping at the bit mm-hmm. to get at the Model 3. So yeah. uh, if anybody's out there, please uh, get in touch with us and stuff. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll try and make this happen for these guys. So we really appreciate yeah. it. Anyhow, so how can people get a hold of us, Ken? Well, of course, through email. So if you've got questions that you want to ask us like this or, or anything else, please send us an email at m3ocshow at gmail.com. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. My handle is at Model3Owners, and Ken is at Kenneth Bacor. Yeah. Don't forget to check out our website at model3ownersclub.com. All the uh, really great conversations. I mean, Lots of stuff going on in there. Thousands of members on there and wow. all kinds of uh, information, some great pictures on there. Highly uh-huh. encourage you that to take a look at that. We also have a page, a uh, Facebook page, and you can uh, just search for Model 3 Owners Club on Facebook. We've got uh, probably over 10,000 members on that now, so oh, that's great. really growing you like crazy. Was it impacted the other day when Facebook hiccuped, I heard? Um, I haven't really on? paid attention, yeah. but uh, yeah, but it's Guess certainly not. growing. Yeah. Uh, lastly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, click yeah, the important. subscribe button and click the like button on your way out. And don't mm-hmm. forget to click the little bell icon because if you don't do that, you don't get instant notifications whenever That's we right. put out some new content. So make sure you do that. Uh, lastly, don't forget, we have a Patreon uh, page that we'd encourage you to take a look at. You can find that at patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. Um, any donations and, and uh, subscriptions that you do on there yeah. really help keep the channel going, pays for equipment stuff, and we really appreciate all of our... Uh, yeah, very our much pitch, so. Thanks to everybody supporting producers, us for yes. there. And I know that you list all our producers in the show credits as well. So yes. appreciate everybody that's jumping in on that. And of course, if you want to have swag like we're wearing and that we have, coffee cups and all kinds of... You've got some new hoodies, you've got some jackets, you've got some shirts now that you've come out with and other stuff uh, on the store check it out yeah people seem to like them so uh, every little bit helps it's a lot of fun so anyhow that's it for today folks yeah episode 22 is in the can thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one take care peace